This clip's about how to handle a common trigonometry problem where you know the length of all three sides of a triangle, but all three angles are missing in the problem. And I'm going to show you how to tackle that problem with an example on the left, and then later I'll get you to try a problem that's similar on the right. So let's have a look at the problem that I'm going to solve. Three light posts are positioned in a park as shown. Calculate the angles between the lights. And the beautiful, well-lit park looks just like this. You can see we've got a triangle here. The corners are the light posts, and we know the length in between each light post. However, we don't know any of the angles, so what to do? Well, the only trigonometry tool that'll work in this situation is the cosine law. It's the only one that works when we don't know any angles, but we know all three sides. So let's start off the cosine law by labeling this triangle. To use this triangle in the cosine law, we're going to have to label the angles, or in this case the light posts, with capital letters. So I'm going to say capital A, capital B, and then capital C. And we're also going to need the side lengths, so those will have corresponding lowercase letters. So here's angle A. Its opposite side is right here at 15 meters, so I'll call that lowercase a. And this is B, angle B, and the matching side length is over here at 19 meters. And finally, 17 meters for side C. Okay, so now that the triangle's all set up, we can pick an angle and solve it using the cosine law. I'm going to choose angle A to start us off. So I've written out the cosine law for angle A, where the angle is right here at the end, and we have its matching side over here on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And we have angle or side length B and C right in these spots. Let's fill in the values. Side A is given as 15 squared is equal to B squared, which is 19 squared, plus the other side, C, which is 17 squared, minus 2 times 19 for B, and C is 17 and cos of the angle, which we don't know, we'll call that A. There, we've set up the cosine law. Next, we want to isolate for this piece, the cos of A, and eventually solve for the angle A. So we need to start moving all of these numbers to the other side. Let's do that now. First, 15 squared is 225. I'm going to skip using my calculator for a few of these steps, but if you need to, that's fine, go ahead and do that, is equal to now we'll do 19 squared plus 17 squared. 19 squared plus 17 squared is 650 minus 2 times 19 times 17 is 646, and it's still multiplying that cos A at the end. Next, I'm going to move the 650 to the other side of the equal sign. So, in effect, I'm subtracting 650 from both sides of the equation. I'm also going to divide both sides of the equation by minus 646, which will leave the cos A all by itself on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Next, I'm going to solve for this fraction here. Now, typically, I'd go ahead and punch that in the calculator, but to save some time, I went ahead and did it earlier, and I get an answer of... 0.65789, and that's still equal to the cos of A. Once I get to this stage, I'm ready to solve for the angle in the question, which is angle A right here. But to do that, I need to use an inverse cos button, and I'm going to add this number into my calculator. So let's try that now. I'll bring in my scientific calculator. And to solve for an angle, I'm looking for the inverse cos, which is right here at the negative 1 exponent. You can find it above the cos button. I'll hit shift, cos, then type in my number, 0.65789, and hit enter. And there is my angle for A. Let's say 49 degrees. A is equal to 49 degrees. One down, two more to go. 
Once you've found one angle, you can pick the other, either one of the other two, either B or C, and repeat the exact same steps I showed you here to solve for that angle. I'll save you some time and I'll skip all the steps, all of these steps to solve for angle B, but essentially you're doing the exact same thing. You're just putting variables in different spots and you would isolate for cos of B the same way. So if you wanted to try this step on your own, you should find that angle B is 73 degrees. Now that there's only one angle left, angle C, it's the easiest one to solve. Since we know that all triangles must have three angles that add up to 180 degrees, we can just find angle C by doing 180 minus the other two angles, A and B. And it turns out that C will be equal to 58 degrees when we do that. And there we go. We've solved for all three missing angles in a triangle by using the cosine law twice and then using the angle sum of a triangle, which says all angles must add up to 180. And now it's your turn to practice solving for all three angles in a triangle. Let's see if you can calculate the missing angles for this triangle by using the cosine law twice and then angle sum. So follow the steps I showed on the left and we'll see how you do when you're ready. Angle A is 69 degrees, angle B is 58 degrees, and finally angle C is 53 degrees.